Hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of the series where we are decoding the INIs. Make sure you watch the first part whose link will be in the description. In our previous episode, we understood what are INIs, their importance and how they function. We also covered major INIs like IITs, NITs, IIITs, ICERs and AIMS. Now let's move on to the sixth category of the INIs, the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research or NIPER. The Indian pharmaceutical industry is the largest exporter of generic drugs in the world. To keep up with the standard and global position in drug discovery and development, the government of India has acknowledged that human resources and talent pools are pivotal. The very first NIPER Institute was set up in 1998 at Mohali as a registered society under the Society's Registration Act 1860. Subsequently, six other NIPER Institutes were established during the 2007-8 period. With the passing of the Parliamentary Act of the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Act 1998 and subsequent amendments, all seven NIPERs have been conferred with the INI status. NIPERs provide degrees such as MS, MPharm, MTech, MBA and PhD. Let us now talk about IIMs or the Indian Institute of Management. One of the leading groups of global management studies, IIMs were established to provide quality management education and training, administer development research, and provide consultancy services in the field of management. IIMs offer PG programs, executive one-year MBA programs, and doctoral programs in management. Some IIMs like Indore and Rohtak also have integrated programs in management. In addition to this, the institute also conducts research for non-corporate and under-managed sectors such as agriculture, rural development, health education and many more. With the passing of the Indian Institutes of Management Act 2017 and its subsequent amendments, all the 20 IIMs have been conferred with the INI status. To secure a seat for any of the courses offered at IIM, one must obtain a valid cutoff score in the Common Admission Test or CAT. And for a one-year MBA program, a valid cutoff score in CAT or GMAT will suffice. Like IITs, IIMs have also produced many famous industry veterans like Raghuram Rajan, the ex-RBI governor, Ajay Banga, vice chairman at General Atlantic, to name a few. Next up, we have the National Institute of Design or NID. Now, the period of 1950s witnessed rapid industrialization taking place in India. And as a direct reaction to it, the government of India saw the need to optimize the situation and establish an institute that dealt primarily with design. On the advice of Pupul Jayakar, a noted writer on Indian craft traditions, and a few other like-minded people, the government of India decided to establish an institute. In 1957, when the needs outgrew, the government requested the Ford Foundation to visit India and provide a report on the possibility of such an institution. Based on the report submitted and with the assistance of the foundation and the Sarabhai family, the government of India established the National Institute of Industrial Design as it was initially called in 1961 at Ahmedabad. National Institute of Design is internationally acclaimed as one of the finest educational and research institutions for industrial, communication, textile and IT integrated experiential design. It is a statutory institute under the DPIIT Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. The courses offered at NIDs are Bachelor of Design and Master of Design. Admission to UG courses is through an entrance examination conducted by the NID itself called as DAT or Design Aptitude Tests in Prelims and Mains stages. There are a total of five NIDs in India and all of them have been conferred with the INI status through the Parliamentary Act of the National Institute of Design Act 2014. Notable alumni of NID are filmmaker Debakar Banerjee, TV anchor Rob aka Harun Robert, renowned graphic designer Sujata Keshavan, and many more. The ninth category is the National Institute of Food Technology, Entrepreneurship and Management or NIFTM. NIFTM was conceived by the Government of India to meet the ever-growing demands of the food industry. Its objective was to have a one-stop solution provider for the various problems of the sector. The institute was set up with an initial investment of Rs 500 crore by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. The focus areas of the institute are research, consultancy, skill development, business incubation and enterprise development. 
There are two NIFTM institutes in India situated at Tamil Nadu and Haryana. They offer B.Tech, M.Tech, MBA and PhD programs in food technology and management. Admission to the B.Tech programs is by securing a valid cutoff score in JEE Main and admission to M.Tech programs is based on a GATE score and personal interview. With the passing of the Parliamentary Act of the National Institute of Food Technology, Entrepreneurship and Management Act 2021, both the existing NIFTIMs have been conferred with the INI status. Last but not the least, we have the School of Planning and Architecture or SPAs. In 1941, the first School of Planning and Architecture was set up as the Department of Architecture of Delhi College of Engineering, now the Delhi Technological University. The department was later affiliated with the University of Delhi and integrated into the School of Town and Country Planning. As it got integrated, the school was renamed as School of Planning and Architecture in 1959. There are a total of three SPAs in India at Delhi, Bhopal and Vijaywara. All schools offer both undergraduate and postgraduate courses in planning, architecture and design. Admission to the undergraduate courses is either through JEE main score or the direct admissions of students abroad or DASA UG score. For the postgraduate courses, one has to secure a valid cutoff score in GATE or Common Entrance Examination for Design CEED. With the passing of the Parliamentary Act of the School of Planning and Architecture Act 2014, all three SPAs have been conferred with INI status. Leading Indian architect Raj Rewal, Booker Prize winner Arundhati Roy, and former Nepalese PM Baburam Bhattari are a few of the well-known alumni of SPAs. Through this subdivision, it is worth noting that we have covered only the majority of the disciplines of public higher educational institutions in India that have been conferred with the INI status. There are many more distinct disciplines on the list. For a complete list, please check out the first link in the description below. Now that we know about the various INI institutes, let's take a look at a few additional features of INIs. In postgraduate and doctoral programs, one of the most important functions of an INI is to provide opportunities to train teachers for colleges by presenting them with an atmosphere of research and development. Students are introduced to the latest methodologies of teaching and are encouraged by presenting them with opportunities to participate in teaching exercises actively. Furthermore, another aspect of the INIs is to unite the educational facilities of the highest order in one single place. The educational principles and practices adopted by the INIs are best suited for the development of our nation. With INIs striving ahead for the greater good of academics, we should not hesitate in saying that these institutes are the model institutions for the higher education system in India. Their delivery, alma mater and achievements help other institutions to align their goals in the right direction, be it in research or academic input. INIs thus intend to overcome the conventional educational barriers and foray into a more advanced and research-oriented educational frontier. At Upgrad Campus, we believe that any institute can be turned into a next-gen institution with the right kind of technology and course structure. We offer our technology solutions to transform classrooms via our lecture capture system and also offer new age courses that institutes can offer their students to get industry ready and ultimately bridge the gap between industry and academia.